a couple months ago, maybe a month ago, I watched a video on YouTube by, I believe it was a YouTuber called Daryl Talks Games. Uh, if I put this up on YouTube later, I'll leave the link to the video down below. Uh, it was just a video about a guy kind of going through the same thing I did, where it's like, my backlog is huge. I don't really have the energy to play a lot of things. And what helped me was like, just going through the effort of organizing a list of things that I actually feel strongly about playing and deciding what I no longer wish to play and just removing it from my backlog. And that's what we're gonna do today. Dr. Pepper can went, I'm really upset. I actually intended to pick up a can of Dr. Pepper on the way home just to complete the bit. I forgot and I'm really upset with myself, but that is something that I'm just gonna have to live with. Mean of the Hollower, yes, that is going up to, I'm just gonna shove that up to the top of the list. I'm gonna play that straight up. I love Yacht Club. I'm playing that when it comes out. I mean, yeah, I like little mini game collections. It's something I could very quickly, easily pick up and decide if I, this is maybe like an excitement three, but I'll, I'll deal with that later. Evil Land two, never playing it. I don't know why that's still on here. I enjoyed the first Evil Land a fair amount, uh, but I'm never playing the second one. Let's be real. Lost Planet two. I'm never playing that. Last Man Sitting, I'm... There's just some... There's a lot of things on my Steam wish list that I saw just like a trailer for. I went, oh, that looks kind of neat. I'll just put it on my wish list to look at it later. I don't feel strongly about that. Devolver Bootleg, never playing it. Uh, Steven Sausage Roll, I'm never playing it. Just, I'm just... It's not happening. Final Fantasy... This is what kind of what kicked off me wanting to call the backlog is I got the Steam notification for, hey, Final Fantasy X and X2 is on sale. It's on your wish list. And I'm like, I love these games. I'm never playing these again. Shenzhen IO. Um, I mean, I'm going to kick it up top for now because I do love Zaktronics and they're never making another video game ever again. And I think that's one of the few games that I've yet to play by them. Dishonored 2. Am I ever gonna play it? Wasn't it, it didn't used to be like five bucks. If someone can give me a copy for five bucks, then I'll play it, but I'm probably, I enjoy the first Dishonor quite a bit, but also I'm probably just never playing the second one. Dead Cells, it, I would have played it by now if I actually felt strongly about playing it. It has a cool style. But it still does not have a release date. The fuck is it? Uh, this is like another roguelike, I think roguelike yep get out of here i'm just i'm, I'm just done with roguelikes i think the last roguelike i actually enjoyed well i mean i got really into hades for a bit but even then it's still not my favorite super giant game and then even earlier than that i've just been running out of steam on roguelikes this is just like a cute little metroidvania hades 2 i'm a little i'm both excited and disappointed about hades 2 because, like, one of the things I really enjoyed about, you know, um, Supergiant Games is every game they did was this brand new thing. And this is the first time where it's just not. And I super get it. Like, Hades took off, right? I totally get it. Chase, chase the money. You know, you got more ideas. Go for it. There's a lot of ground to, to, to work on there. But also just, like... I, I was really looking forward to whatever it was they did next. But also, I know if they ever did a Pi or two, I would be the most annoying person on the planet. So I don't blame them. This just has a cool style. I think gameplay. Oh, man, it's like a Trials game, but with like <laughs> guns, I guess. Musical Story. This is a game that has like a cool looking style, but I've heard literally nothing about it since it came out. And... I... Probably not playing it. This is just like a puzzle game in the style. Okay, this is not the other Sojourn game I'm thinking of. This is a puzzle game in the style of, I think, Talos Principle. I put it on here just because I like the art style. Honestly. I didn't much care for Talos Principle. I won't lie. I, I bounced off that game a couple times. I got like a couple hours in and just never continued. I just got a little bit bored. So I'm going to go ahead and... Cut it. Lice your uh, paper airplane. I can just go throw some outside. This game has a good looking style. Oh shit, it's coming out in like four days. Ooh, okay, you can't say favorite games in Disco Elysium and expect me to cut this because I fucking love Disco Elysium. So I think, look, this 
it's coming in like four days. I'm not cutting it yet. That can stay on. Phantom Brigade. It looks really cool, but it's an... <sighs> it's been in early access for two years. I don't play early access games straight up. If a game is in early access, I may buy it and then not play it until it actually comes out. It doesn't have a release date. So at the very least, I'm going to keep it on here because I it is a game I'm interested in. Um, but I may not add it to the... 2023 list because we don't know when it's actually coming out. It is a turn-based tactic. I put it on here just because I really like the style. Fire Emblem Conquest really ruined strategy games for me. Not in the sense of that was so good that I don't enjoy them anymore. But that game was so terrible I no longer derive any enjoyment out of turn-based strategy games. <laughs> yeah. Drinking game. When I say the game has a good look and style, drink a Dr. Pepper. This stream sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Not actually sponsored. No sponsor. This is not an ad. This is just a bit. <laughs> Do not sue me, FTC, or whoever controls uh, that kind of stuff going on. There's just the, a game ad for Donkey Kong that says, game tip number one to win the game, drink Dr. Pepper. And I just thought that was a funny way to pad out the layout in this stream. Not sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Ultra Kill's still in early access? I'm sorry. This game came out how long ago? What's going on with this? Everyone talks about this game so much. It's still in early access? I guess I had to get that butt plug plug-in worked in, huh? Harold Halibut. Everyone, uh, get your Dr. Peppers ready because this is a game that I think has a really cool style. You, you may find uh, a bit of a running theme with me where style trumps a lot. Style for me in a game is like one of the main things I'm looking for. Like I want to be taken on like a trip and this looks really neat. It's a game that looks like a stop motion show. I think I'm just going to go ahead and take it off. Uh, I'll revisit it when uh, it eventually comes out and people tell me whether it's good or not. Yeah, Lanky Kong is my least favorite Kong. That Kong's got no style. Nine Years of Shadows is a game that I don't even think it has a... Oh, it does have a trailer, actually. Ooh, it's got one of those live streams right now. Oh, it's a Metroidvania. Oh, no. Speaking of games that I'm a little bit tired of. Hey, has this stream been going on for 74 hours? But Metroidvania just don't grip me in the way that they used to anymore. They've There's just this huge indie explosion of Metroidvanias, and I feel like at this point, I've seen them all. Uh, I mean, Puzzle Platformer, I'm honestly just probably never going to play this. Straight up. Puzzle, speaking of genres, I'm a little bit tired of. Puzzle Platformers. I was a Flash gamer in the early 2000s. I have played many, 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 many Puzzle Platformers. Just looks kind of cute, right? Oh my god, 20 bucks though. That'll stay firmly in the sale category but it'll stay on for now. Oh, okay, so Weird RPG. Ooh, I don't know if this is gonna have legs. Yeah, I'm probably gonna cut it, but I think uh, the words I'm looking for is uh, stylistically, it's my style of game, but I'm probably, yeah, there we go. It's kind of underwhelming once you get past the novelty. So I think that that gets cut. Arrow GPX, I just put on here as like a pin. The Kickstarter for this just very recently finished up. It's not coming out until 2024. It is, it's an F-Zero clone, but I am interested in playing it because I love F-Zero. I am not like a huge Streets of Rage fan, but I am a big uh, Lizard Cube fan. They made the, um, the remake of Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap. They did all the art for this and the art in that game is fucking stunning and beautiful and then also the gameplay in this is made by who is it guard crush the people who made that awful fighting game to i mean great but like visually awful uh beat em up that has the nostalgia critic as a playable character which i just am fascinated by so signalist i need someone to sell me on signalist because uh i'm not a horror game fan oh no it doesn't live up to the hype i don't know I'll sit on it and wait for someone to sell me on it. Solar Ash, that's actually, I'm just gonna, that game looks like it fucks, and I'm just putting that right up at the top of the list. 
Ooh, okay. Well, everything else on here just stays on. So, let's see. This is a spin-off game of uh, Hypnospace Outlaw, which I absolutely want to play. Metal Hell Singer and Neon White are games that I wanted to play since the start of 2022, and I just didn't, and I absolutely want to play them. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, I think that is supposedly coming out this year. It's Jet Set Radio, made by the people who made Lethal League. So, like, this is going to be good, just straight up. Dream Settler, Hypnospace 2. Uh, Mina the Hollower is the sequel to... Finally, Shovel Knight is getting, like, a, a sequel. It's not really a sequel to Shovel Knight, but it's the next game being developed by uh, Yacht Club, and it's not just more Shovel Knight. I do want to show Skate Story, because this looks insane. This game just looks beautiful. You're a demon made of glass and pain, so you must skate, I guess. I don't know what the point of this game is, but I love it. So yeah, this this stays like top of the list. Steam wishlist has officially been called. I'm gonna go ahead and start bringing these over to the list list. I think that's, a, that's okay for now, and I'm ready to move on to Epic Games. This is gonna be a bit shorter, because there isn't a Steam, oh, there is a, a wish list for Epic, but I haven't put anything on it. We're gonna just quickly look through um, the games that I do actually own on Epic because I got a lot of things for free and there might be a couple things out of here that I might be interested in playing. Not much. Epic, thank you for all the free games. Probably only playing a couple of them. Yeah, I have not installed very many Epic games. Like, I'm never playing Alan Wake. I'm never playing Alien Isolation. I played 20 min 28 minutes of Ape Out. That game's actually pretty neat, but you play, 20 you play 30 minutes of it, you get it. Like, Axiom Verge, I play... I own 237 things on Epic. What the fuck? Celeste, I've already played it. So Citizen Sleeper. Citizen Sleeper, I absolutely want to play. That's going on the list. So let's go ahead and... I mean, I bought it very recently because I do feel strongly about playing it. Man, I wish I loved Control because as you can see, I played seven and a half hours of it because the style, everyone drink your Dr. Peppers, um, of that game is so... So good. So good. This the style in that game is so good. It was carrying that game. But I just didn't like the gameplay that much. But there is a god mode in that game. Is that game worth revisiting and just turning on god mode? Put control on here as a like a three. And then a notes <laughs> turn on god mode. <laughs> you weenie. I'm never playing Death Stranding. I actually own Death Stranding on PS4. I played like three hours of it and went. If this game was just walking along lumpy green America with sad indie music playing in the background and nothing else, I'd probably complete that game. But then it wants you to pee on a ghost, and then I'm just like, I'm done. Uh, game deck. This is actually something I was on my Steam wish list, and I have it for free. Uh, game deck. Because I I'm kind of I'm interested in playing it, especially since I have it for free, and it was on my list for a while. Uh, I'm never playing Neo. Night in the Woods I've played before. Nuclear Throne I'm never playing. Oh, Outer Wilds. That's something that goes on the list. So I have played Outer Wilds. Obviously, I've played 17 and a half hours of it. I have yet to play the DLC for it. Outer Wilds DLC. Uh, I'm actually very excited about checking that. Uh, that is not a stream game because I don't want anyone to spoil me on it. <laughs> also, it's a puzzle game and puzzle games are not interesting to stream. I have Remnant from the Ashes. Was that game? I heard a lot of people talking about that game when it came out just because it was a Dark Souls with guns. But was that game actually any good? I was really disappointed with Sable. Just playing it just didn't feel good. 
I was really excited for it when I first saw the trailers for it. You know, the Japanese breakfast song kicks in and you see all the cool visuals. Uh, Drink your Dr. Peppers. I love the style of it. But the act of actually playing it did not feel good. And it just ruined it for me. Speaking of Ruin, Ruiner is actually a pretty good game and you should play it. Uh, what remains of Edith Finch? I didn't realize I had that. I've heard so many good things about that game when it came out. Is that something that's worth checking out in 2023? All right, we got one last thing to look at. I need a second. I will quickly say uh, my microphone and webcam are not super synced up with this. So like if I could press right, there's a bit of a delay. That is something I need to fix before I start streaming Switch games. Uh, how am I liking Xenoblade 3? That is a complicated question because I actually enjoy the story and the characters quite a bit. Like, there's some worrying stuff at the very start of 3. Like, the world building starts off with, like, everyone's born at the age of 12 and we're all child soldiers. And I'm like, oh, no. This has a potential to be very bad, but they actually handle it like very maturely and very well, and the characters are very relatable. The gameplay is kind of not good. It's way more complicated than it needs to be. Like I go back to like Xenoblade 1, and it's just like, you've got your, your bar of moves and you do the moves and that's combat. And there's just so much to Xenoblade 3. It's just, it's, overly complicated for stuff that is not actually that complicated. It's a bit tough to explain. I'm putting Monster Hunter Generations on here because I love Monster Hunter and I would, love, I would especially love to stream some of this one because everyone's seen me, well not everyone, but I have already streamed Monster Hunter World. I have already streamed Monster Hunter Rise. People have seen me play modern Monster Hunter. I want to play these sort of older, jankier, shittier ones. I'm actually enjoying this game quite a bit. So, Taxic, I mean, yeah, I got Tactics Ogre is going on the list. I've never played the original. I bought this and then was immediately overwhelmed on like mission three, where you fight like a necromancer and he just kicks your ass. And I was like, cool. I'm a little too stupid for this right now. I need to come back to this later. So I got, I picked up Curse of the Moon 2 when it came out and played through it and just kind of found it like really, really hard, way harder than it really needed to be to the point where I just didn't replay it. And then like a year ago, I started replaying it and got like halfway through and went like, I'm kind of into this. I'll, play it, I'll put it down. It's just like a three, something I can visit if I have enough time. Oh yeah, uh, Mega Man Battle Network. Mega Man Battle Network Collection. I am excited for that because they're making Battle Network, but it has uh, online multiplayer, which I've never done before. I mean, it, I did a little bit of Link Cable like twice ever, but you know, what? okay, I'll talk. I'll put it up now. I actually on the list of games that I want to play this year that I have written on the side that are not part of any of these platforms. I have an analog pocket now. I can play my Game Boy Advance games, my Game Boy games in a really modern, good looking way. I kind of want to replay an old Fire Emblem because Engage has come out and it's kind of just made me mad about Fire Emblem again because there's not been a Fire Emblem that I've enjoyed in the past 10 years. So, I mean, now that I can play my Game Boy Advance games, I, I'm going to... I'm going to put Fire Emblem 7 on the list. I'll put it down. It's just like a three. Like, I'm not really dying to uh, replay it, but I want to... What is this farty Super Nintendo song? Oh, it's Super Ghouls and Ghosts. I just hear this. Oh, yeah. Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight needs to go on the list. So me being an absolute buffoon, when I let's played Shovel Knight six years ago, I want to say at this point, at the end, the only other campaign that was out was Plague Knight. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to let's play Plague Knight at some point. I don't know what kind of form that's going to take. 
because so much of the game is just a repeat of Shovel Knight. And I don't know how I want to handle that in a Let's Play form. I'm going to wait for the other DLCs to come out and then decide then. And I, I've i just never gotten around to playing the rest of the campaigns. I'm not going to Let's Play the other campaigns because I don't have that level of energy in me anymore. If I play the Shovel Knight games, it's going to be a stream. Yes. it's going to. I'm going to just stream Plague Knight. I'm going to stream Spectre Knight. I'm going to stream King Knight. I'm just going to stream them and get them up on my YouTube. And that's going to be the story on that. Because I said I was going to have them all up on my YouTube at some point in the future. And I, I need to do it before Mean of the Hollower comes out or I'm never going to do it. Do I have any items on the list that have excitement levels other than three and five? Yes, there are some fours on here. If there is nothing on here, so it is a scale of one to five, but like if I'm not excited to play it, I don't want it on here. So it is a little bit of a flawed system, but it is like a very um, quick check of just like, is this actually at least a three? If it is not at least a three, why am I putting it on here? Xenoblade Definitive Edition. That can go on here because I want to continue my 100% run of that game because that game fucks hard often and severely. I will return momentarily. I need to get my phone because that has the notepad of the remaining things on this list. I just remembered it's not actually on my phone, but it's accessible through my phone. So since I've gone through the effort of getting my phone, I'm just going to go ahead and continue looking through here. <laughs> Only thing on any of my wish lists. Dude, I wish Scalebound would come out. Let's go ahead, Scalebound. Six. If that ever comes out, I'm absolutely playing it and streaming it. Um. So I actually own Hitman 1, but the only level I've ever played is Paris. And I really enjoyed it. And then I just never continued playing it. I think that that would be pretty fun to play. Uh, Monster Hunter. Okay, so I put Monster Hunter Generations on here because I definitely want to play more of that. Monster Hunter Rise goes on here because I do want to play more of that. I need to do the title updates. I'm kind of just looking for an excuse to replay Monster Hunter World, but only if I can come up with a challenge run to make it more interesting. Because I can't just replay that game from start to finish. I've done that already, and that gets boring. I'd rather just play on my existing character. If I can come out... <gasps> oh, shit. Thank you for reminding me Feet Rhythm comes out. Feet Rhythm, Feet Rhythm, Feet, feet Rhythm. Feet Rhythm. Five, 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 five. Stream. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Holy shit. I forgot that game comes out this year. Shin Megami Tensei 3. So I've never played SMT3. I played SMT4. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I hear 3 is the best. It did get that HD... I hesitate to call it remake update recently. Yeah, ports kind of butts. Is it worth emulating uh, on the PS2 and playing it that way? I'll put it on SMT3 as a three, and I'll just say emulate the original. Uh, Yakuza, so I am still in the process of playing through every Yakuza game in chronological order. I'm at Yakuza three. Yeah, so I'm gonna write Yakuza three onwards. <laughs> Mega Man Battle Network Collection, I put that on here. Sekiro. I kind of want to replay Sekiro because that game is one of the two games that I played in 2022 that made me feel emotions about it being good. So I'm going to put that as a four. I would maybe consider streaming it because, I mean, it's a hard game and it's fun. Spe okay, speaking of replaying video games, there are two people in the chat that I need to call out. Ed and Quark. I want to replay Rondo of Blood. I'm going to put that as five because it is the best Castlevania. And I want to stream it to show Ed that he has skill issues because this game 
is amazing. <laughs> yeah, so... I played Elden Ring last year. Naturally, because it came out last year. Before that, my FromSoft history was... I played Dark Souls 1 when it came out. Loved it, because it was just such a, a formative game at that time. Played 2, hated it. Played 3... Thought it was fine, never finished it. I played Elden Ring, and I was so annoyed with that game that I went and played Sekiro and Bloodborne instead for the first time. Sekiro, phenomenal. Bloodborne made me realize that Dark Souls 1 was maybe not as good as I originally thought it was. What I've never played is Demon's Souls. I'm going to put that as a three if I can emulate it because I don't have a PS5. I'm never going to get a PS5. I don't have a PS3. But if it emulates okay, I think I would like to try streaming it. Speaking of emulating games, bye-bye, Box Boy. Got to emulate it because the shop is shut down. Okay, I've got a couple meme games on this list. Elder Scrolls Oblivion and Legend of Dragoon. They're just games that I've been thinking of a lot recently because they are games that I do love. Am I ever going to actually replay those? I don't have that kind of time. I'm putting Street Fighter VI and Grand Blue Fantasy versus Re Ri Rising... So I have a complicated relationship with fighting games in that I mostly only enjoy them when I'm playing with friends. Uh, I've just fallen off of PvP games a lot in recent years. And I've been thinking about when I did actually enjoy fighting games. So like I bought Dragon Ball Fighter Z um, when that came out. Played a little bit of the training, played against some friends a couple times, and then never touched it again. If I think two fighting games that I've actually super enjoyed, it's stuff like Super Smash Brothers, or if I think way back, Soul Calibur 3, Soul Calibur 2. Games that have like kind of extensive and fun single player modes. And I know single player is obviously not the ideal way to play a fighting game, but there are some times in a competitive environment where I just want to exist in that kind of space of the game, but not actually compete. I want to just kind of mess around in my own time. Supposedly, both of these games have possibly exciting or interesting single player campaigns. Um, I'm probably only going to end up buying one of these. I'm going to put them in it as a three. I don't know figure out single player is worth or not. Whichever one of these has the better, better single player is probably going to be the one that I buy and play the most. Final Fantasy 14. Uh, I want to solo the new deep dungeon and the variant dungeon. The variant dungeon came out a while ago, and then I heard like nobody talk about it, but I know it's content that you can do solo. So I want to do that. Who's ready to absolutely put me on blast for this one? I want to try Final Fantasy 11. Because <laughs> it sounds like shit. I forget why I've been thinking about it recently, but just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a thread on the Final Fantasy XIV subreddit recently where someone played through the entire game without ever unlocking teleport. They just like walked, uh, chocobo portered, airshipped everywhere. And it just made me nostalgic for like World of Warcraft where you had to wait for the boat to arrive. It made me nostalgic for like Ragnarok Online where Everyone had to, like, pay a priest to teleport them places. Sometimes I want to exist in an MMO space and just be inconvenienced. I kind of miss that, and I want to try Final Fantasy XI. If I did play it, I would probably try retail, yeah. The, the thing that's been putting me off 
trying it for so long is because I would need to buy it and then pay for a subscription. Like, I cannot believe that game still has an active, active subscription. Like, that's kind of ridiculous. I'm going to put Trackmania on here. What, whatever the most recent Trackmania is, I don't know. Can anyone tell me about Hi-Fi Rush? It came out very recently. Everyone's singing its praises, saying it's actually shockingly good. I have one hang up about that game. Every, like, so everyone's comparing it to like, Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, saying it's really good. It's super fun to play. I've watched some of the, the cutscenes that people have been putting up on Twitter. It looks like it's got a great style to it. Drink your Dr. Peppers. I've got one hang up about it. The only actual like gameplay footage I've seen of it is just like the gameplay reveal they put out when they first announced the game of just like the first combat scene on probably easy mode and it looked very slow. Is that game challenging for a rhythm game player and a Devil May Cry action style player? As someone who loves both of those styles of games, Am I going to feel challenged by that game? Does the pace ever actually pick up? That's what I want to know. Because that's going to be the thing that like draws me to it. I want to I want to feel something. Yeah, it's only like two days old. We'll see what people say when like the combo fiends unlock very hard mode or whatever. Damn, I put 55. I was not expecting this list to come up to 55 games. Yeah, scale bound. Okay, I have 54 games on this list because scale bound is a meme entry. But I got a bunch of games that I, do, I feel strongly about playing. Several things that I think would make an interesting stream. Like, I've got 55, 54 games that I feel like in 2023, I could play this and walk away feeling an emotion, feeling strongly about something. And that is a much better place than I was in in 2022 thank you so much everyone for keeping me company as i do this this upkeep and providing your opinions i think 2023 is gonna be a pretty exciting year and i hope to share my opinions of these games with you guys soon